Brian Charles from Charles Double Reed Company. Today I'm going to talk about how to prepare and break in pre-made reeds, bassoon reeds in this case. So your reed has arrived in the mail and it's time to give it a try. Let's talk about how to prepare and break in a brand new reed that's just arrived. Now, when you first open it up, more than likely you're going to see that the sides are not closed. That's entirely normal. That's part of what happens when the reed gets dried out. So when your reed first arrives, it'll be bone dry. And among the other things that'll happen is this wire, the top wire is going to be loose. That's normal. Sometimes they even slip down. Just push it back up. You'll see that there are indentations on both sides where the wire goes. Now it's time to wet the reed. So a lot of people prefer to put their reeds in water just like this, a portion of the reed, maybe three quarters of the reed. Some people like to put it in like this, but fill the water up all the way. And other people like to drop it into, uh, into water 100%. Whichever way you decide to go, use warm water, let the reed sit in there for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, and then test it. More than about two minutes and the reed is gonna to start to get soggy. If you do put the reed in there and leave it in there by accident for too long, take it out, let it dry for about a half an hour, and try again. Once your reed is nice and wet, the opening should be something like this, where you can see the, uh, the tips have now closed, um, it has a kind of a smile-like feature, and it may be, let's see, this one a little bit too open. So now it's time to adjust the reed so that the opening is correct. Now that wire that was loose before should be tight now, but if it's not, you can get yourself a pair of pliers. First of all, that's an important thing for every bassoon player to have. Um, a little pair of needle nose pliers like this, you can get them at the hardware store, uh, you can get them through Charles Double Reed Company, but wherever you get them, have a pair ready. You can pull up the wire slightly, turn it in the same direction in which it's twisted, in this case to the left, and then close that again. Really a quarter turn is going to be enough. That will tighten the wire enough so that it really does what it's supposed to do, which is support the shape of the top the tip of the reed. Now if we were to squeeze this way, you'll see that the tip is going to close right down. And that is too close to tip. You can't even get any sound through that. If you squeeze on this side, you'll see the tip opens right up. And that's too big. So we kind of want the mama bear version. We want it in between. And that's going to be determined by your playing style. So you can adjust this back and forth until you get a, um, a sense that the reed is playing the way you like it. The second wire is also important and can be adjusted. That's a little bit more complicated. And there is a third wire back underneath the Turk's head knot. Now, at the back of the reed, the part that goes onto the bocal, um, this circle, circular opening back here is made specifically to fit onto your bocal. Uh, occasionally, it could be too small or too large. That's another topic that we'll cover later. If you do have that problem, speak with your teacher or give us a call here at Charles Double Reed Company. So once your reed is wet and the tip is adjusted, it's time to give it a test. Um, rather than putting it on the bassoon to start with, just testing it without the instrument is going to tell you a lot. <coughs> Giving it a little blow like that and then looking for the crow sound, <coughs> which you get by putting your mouth further onto the reed. Um, what do these mean? It's going to take a while to explain that. I'm not going to do it on this video, but if you do that every time, you'll notice that Reeds react in the same way over and over again in these circumstances. Now, another thing that can happen with reeds is that you can get little tears or breaks. Um, sometimes little pieces of cane will come off on the sides, little fibers. These things are all okay. Um, you know, as the reed gets older, it's going to start to deteriorate. Or if you, by accident, say, put the reed in your hair as you're looking at your instrument, it's going to uh, possibly chip off the ends of the reed. Um, that part of the reed that is most uh, delicate, the tip, can be affected uh, with cracks. Take a look um, at the, you can do this um, on your finger where you push it back a little bit, only do this when it's wet, and this way you can see whether or not there's a crack there. If there is a crack, the reed is pretty much done. A reed like this is going to last you about two to three weeks. And during that period, you know, it's possible you might eat lunch before you practice, and some of your lunch might end up in this reed. And that's not a very good scenario. What would work very well, what we do here, is to take your reed, put it underneath warm tap water, and let the water run through it. 
the water will come out the bottom and it'll flush away debris that's in there. Some people like to put things in there like uh, feathers and so forth. Um, we recommend against that. Uh, just the warm water and you'll find the reed is rejuvenated very quickly. So all of our reeds are guaranteed. If you find you have any problems with the reeds or they're not working correctly, just give us a call or an email and we'll help talk you through it. Um, or if the reed is really damaged, something's gone wrong, uh, we do replace our reeds. So um, hopefully I've answered your questions. If you have more, call me or e email us and we'll be happy to talk you through uh, whatever it is you might be wondering about. I'm Brian Charles, Charles Double Reed Company, and thank you very much for watching.